Welcome back to Inside Politics. We're talking to Deborah Maggot on the Republican side and Larry Woods on the Democratic side about 2018 politics in Tennessee. Let's go now to the U.S. Senate race that's coming up. Uh, Larry, uh, your candidate in that race is going to be uh, Phil, Phil Redison. Redison. He's now basically cleared the uh, primary field. He's going to be the candidate. He's basically said that he's going to run his race based on what needs to be done to fix Washington, not making it into a referendum on Donald Trump. Is that because he was afraid the president's too popular in the state? If it became a referendum on him, it might not be good for a Democrat? Well, uh, A, I think that's correct. Uh, as Deborah pointed out earlier, Trump's numbers are still pretty high uh, in Tennessee by comparison to other states around the nation. But B, Phil Bryson's a known quantity, served eight years as governor, et cetera. People still think highly of him, not only for being a moderate, business-oriented Democrat, but for having the Tennessee Titans and the Nashville Predators, et cetera. He's got major accomplishments he can point to. So there's no reason for him to run an anti-Trump campaign. He's got great positive things of his own he can talk about. But Deborah, whether on. it's Marcia Blackburn, that is the nominee, or it's former Congressman Fincher, who also gets that, that, that nod for the GOP, both of them are wrapping themselves pretty closely around Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So they're going to talk a lot about Donald Trump and how wonderful he is. So does not almost force Phil Bredesen to have to respond to that and therefore bring the president and Donald Trump into the race? I would think so, and, and I, I, I wouldn't think that he would have gotten in the race if he didn't see some type of pathway to victory. I, I can't imagine that at his age and after his career that he would run for this office unless he thought he could win. I wouldn't think that he would do that. So, and it also says something about the Democrat bench. I mean, you know, do you have a bench? I mean, this is the who you talked into well, running. He's clearly our, the Democrats, strongest, best mm -hmm. candidate. Uh, and therefore, I'm glad he's unwilling to undertake the burden. We all know how onerous it is to run a campaign and put yourself out there. I think he and Andrea, his wife, feel very strongly about public service for our community. You know, Bradison's a guy we can all know we can trust. He's not going to turn into a crook. He's not going to turn into some idiot. Uh, it'll be interesting. I think it'll be a very different campaign in the general election, depending on whether it's Fincher or Blackburn that winds up being the Republican nominee. And I think that Republican primary for Senate is going to be very close. Well, let's talk about that. The disclosures in terms of finance have been released by both Fincher and Blackburn. Uh, she's about a million dollars, a half million dollars ahead in terms of what's been raised in the first quarter since they've been both been candidates. She's got about a million dollars plus difference when you add in the money they both got left over from their previous political packs. Deborah, is that a closer contest in July? Is Fincher raising more money than you thought he'd be able to do? I was surprised at how well he did. It hasn't been, what, it's not even been two months right. since they That's since right. he got in the race or talked about getting in the race. So I was surprised uh, having, you know, he's been a person that's been out of office for a couple of terms. Uh, we don't know yet how much money from outside of Tennessee is in that pot uh, for both of them. You or know, may the, come into the pot it, later it may on. may still come into the pot, but yes, I was surprised that he did that well. I yeah. think it'll be a $15 million Republican Pri primary wow. for the Senate, and more than that in the general election between Bradison and Fincher or Blackburn. So it's going to take a lot more money, and the fact that Fincher is pretty much neck and neck with Blackburn on the money raise at this point is shocking to me as an outsider looking in, because Blackburn started two months ago as the odds on favorite. Everybody was just sort of assuming she would be the nominee. So in that sense, Fincher coming within half a million dollars of her is pretty startling. I don't think Fincher would call and ask you about this, Larry, but what do you see as his strategy for able to beat Marsha Blackburn? Well, Pat, as you pointed out as we were getting ready to start the show, with the Fincher background and family background, and gospel music. This is a state, are we number one in gospel music in the universe? Probably. Uh, so he's got a built-in audience and base statewide, and he's got a West Tennessee base that knows him from three terms in Congress. So he starts with certainly as many advantages as Marsha Blackburn does. And frankly, I'm going to be interested to see if the far right-wing conservatives in Tennessee, I'm assuming they'll vote in the Republican primary, are they going to vote for a woman? 
it's going to be real interesting to me to see what happens there. So, Deborah, how do you see the strategy for both sides in the, in the Republican? And I'm not government? happy to be raising that, but I'm trying to be <laughs> focused on what's really happening. I think one of the uh, pluses the uh, former governor has, Governor Bredesen has, is a lot of Republicans, they think he's a Republican. True. You know, there's a lot of people <laughs> that believe he is a Republican. I think there's actually people out, way out away from Nashville that still think and that. There are parts of the Republican hierarchy in the state that have never been all that warm and fuzzy about Marsha Blackburn either. And from well, the days, dating back to the days even when she was in the legislature. And, and, and the rumor is that's why Mr. Fincher is in the race, that the, yes. the, that the elites or whomever yeah. in the party got him to run against her. Larry, it's been so long since a Democrat served from Tennessee in the U.S. Senate, much like what happened in Georgia. Uh, both sides have put out their polls since they got in that sort of says, well, our candidate's ahead. But isn't it more important for Phil Bredesen to show that he can be competitive? Because people don't think of Democrats in this state in terms of being in the U.S. Senate. So he needs some numbers out there that show at least that he has a chance. That's right. He needs to, his campaign needs to keep pushing those good polling numbers out there so as to educate independents, middle-of-the-road voters, and others that Governor Bredesen really does have a major opportunity here to win this election, and I think he does. I mean, he can self-fund if he has to. Uh, I'm sure he'd rather raise all the money, but he can self-fund if it comes to it. I know and he's done it campaigns like that in the past. I was going to say, when I worked in his governor's campaign, he did that. Well, his first mayoral moments. campaign was a lot like and that. It, and it worked. So, so Deborah, um, is this going to be, if it turns out to be Blackburn versus uh, Bredesen, people have been talking about that as sort of like the clash of titans. Is this, is this some kind of historic, high-profile kind of race that Tennessee has rarely seen? And is it going to be that important nationally? They've been talking about this being the race that decides who controls the next U.S. Senate. I, I think it will be. I think that people will come in from all over. We'll see everybody in the world on both sides the of the president? aisle. Well, I, well, the president I believe I'm sure for the her? president will come and try to help Marsha Blackburn. She was one of his early supporters, never wavered uh, in her support for him. So I think that we'll see all kinds of people. It, it's going to be a big year for us this Republican year. Republican Deborah Maggers, our guest, along with Larry Woods, who's a Democratic strategist, back to continue our conversation with him about Tennessee politics after you watch these messages.